Hey everyone, today we're going to work on a tutorial on how to do flocking, which is uh, if you want to simulate carpet or some type of fabric, um, this is a good way to do it. Uh, the materials that we're going to be using, I'll go through first before we get into the demonstration on it. Um, the first thing is going to be the flocking itself. This is uh, from Detail Master. Uh, comes in the big bigger tube. Um, this flocking here is from Ken's uh, Fuzzy Fur. I use a lot of that. Very good product. Um, I actually like the Ken's a little bit better than the Detail Master, but both of them will work for you. They just take a little bit of practice. Um, the one key to doing flocking and making it come out somewhat into scale is this little thing here called a stainless steel T-ball. Um, you can get these at Walmart. Uh, they might cost you a dollar or two. Not too bad. They come in different sizes. Um, this one here is about a two inch. Uh, some of them have uh, handles on them if you, you know, prefer that style. I, I like this uh, style here without the handle. It works a little better for me, but just go ahead and check out the Walmart and, you know, check out different sizes of these and styles and see which one works best for you. Um, as far as holding the flocking onto your part that you're working with. Uh, there's several different ways to do this. Um, some people use basically white glue, um, just thin down with a little bit of water. I've tried it. Uh, for me, it's a little bit too bulky. I'm not a big fan of, of this way of doing it, but it is an option for you to try. It may work better for you. Um, Another one that I have done is the flat finish. This here is an enamel flat finish from a uh, flow quill. Um, this is an this is an acrylic flat finish. Uh, basically, all this is is you just need something that goes on uh, flat and is a clear. If you're doing this style. Um, whether it be enamel, acrylic, or you could also even use the dull coat lacquer. Um, and the last thing to use is paint itself. Um, this is a Tamaya acrylic paint. Uh, this happens to be a gray. Um, the one thing, if you're using paint, you need to match your paint color as close as you can to the flocking color that you want to use. Um, so in this case, we're using a light gray flocking, um, so I'm going to use a light gray Tamaya paint. Uh, I've got my part here. Um, I think this is a seat out of the sleeper in a Volvo kit. Uh, I've got it taped off. Uh, this would be the actual, like, I guess, frame of the seat here. I went ahead and taped that off so we don't get anything on that. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do just the top of it here just to give you an idea on how this process works um, so what we're going to do is start out with that we want to open up the t-ball here and put a little bit of your flocking into it and you can put as much as you want to in there once you get used to doing this technique you'll kind of know how much to put in you don't have to dump a whole lot back in the in the tube and next, we're going to open up our Tamaya paint here. And I've got a fairly wide brush that I use for this. Uh, you want to keep the surface wet with the paint. If it dries on you, the flocking is not going to stick in it properly. So if you use a little bit wider brush, it puts more paint on the surface. And it will help you out a lot on getting an even, consistent layer of flocking down. Um, nothing real hard about this just putting a little paint on you want to try to smooth your paint out as much as you can um, you don't want it real thick and having a lot of streaks in it because it will show up under the flocking and it makes it go way out of scale when it dries so just kind of put your paint on there just like that and smooth it out and you don't want to work that too much because, like I say, if that dries, your flocking is not going to stick in it, right? And just take your T-ball with your flocking in it and just tap it with your finger. 
and just spread the little fibers over your wet paint and just kind of get them to you know drop out there evenly get the whole surface covered nice and even that's that's the main goal at this point right now and I'll hold this up here when I get this done so you can get a better view of what I'm doing okay we have the flocking on all right now this is what it's going to look like at this stage of the process um, it looks a little heavy right now and, and kind of grossly out of scale uh, but in the next step you will change that a lot I'll let that set for um, usually when I'm doing flocking I'll let this set for roughly probably two to three minutes in this case uh, since we're doing the tutorial and I'm trying to keep it uh, fairly short I'm gonna go ahead and and kind of rush this a little bit uh, what you want to do next is just take you can take a paintbrush or a hobby knife or anything and just kind of take it turn your part upside down and just tap it and that will knock the excess flocking off of the part and I'll hold this back up here and you can see on that part there that it's much more back in scale um, now if you need to and you want to add a little bit more to it same process just kind of go back in and put another layer of paint down Let get one more on here. Okay, there we go. That should be enough for that. And same thing again. You just want to tap the T-ball and get the flocking to distribute even over the surface. Now, some people will go in and actually press this down with your finger to kind of press it into the paint a little bit more you can do that um, I try not to touch it too much um, but to show that technique it's just a matter of taking your your index finger and just kind of pressing it down like this into the paint um, you can do it this way like I say most of the time I don't touch it after I've sprinkled the flocking on I just kind of let it sit there and dry and, and do what it needs to do and same procedure you just want to take that turn it over after this is dried a little bit longer than what we're doing here maybe two to three minutes you should be good and just tap the back side of it and that's just to knock the excess off now you will also notice that Underneath of the uh, part that I'm working with here, I have a piece of, uh, it's just basically paper, uh, printer paper. And I use that because the excess that you knock off is still usable material. So when you're done with the part that you're working on, you can actually just take this piece of paper and lift it up. And you can dump this right back into your tube. And that way you don't waste all of that. Uh, this one actually come out pretty good here. I'll hold it up here so you can get a better view of it um, if I can get my camera to pan in here and focus today um, but that's the flocking as of right now it's got a few ups and downs in it um, what you would do is after this dries for a little while probably say an hour or so with the acrylic paints um, you just want to take something like a wide brush and just lightly go across the surface and that will smooth it out a lot more now another trick that I do for uh, anybody that uses an airbrush on their models um, sometimes I will take a little bit of the same color paint that I use to put it on with which in this case it's a uh, uh, light gray from Tamaya and I will put some of this in the airbrush and I will spray over top of the flocking what that does is it'll it'll give you a nice even color on everything and it will also kind of make the fibers lay down a little bit more so they they're not as fuzzy 
Um, it looks a little bit more in scale that way. Um, but this is a pretty easy technique to do. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, the easiest way to do it is just get a, an extra part that you have in your part stash and just, you know, try this technique on it and, and you know, get the hang of it first. It takes, like I say, it takes a little practice to get right, but um, it's a real easy way to simulate carpet or some type of, you know, just regular uh, fuzzy material that you're, like, if you're trying to simulate a suede or something like that, this won't work. It's way out of scale for that. But um, but it's a pretty easy thing to do. You don't need a lot of tools. And, you know, like I say, all this excess that falls off, you can put right back in your tube and save it for a later date. Um, so you're not wasting all of that. So uh, hopefully that helps you out on how to do um, flocking. And if you have any questions or concerns, uh, just leave me a comment on this uh, video. And I'll be more than glad to um, answer your questions or uh, any of the concerns that you have. So I'm going to leave you today with that, and uh, we'll be working on some more tutorials here in the near future. So uh, be looking forward to them, and I thank you for watching.